out of 42 contenders, 16 have risen to the top. These 16 teams will now face off in four semi-finals. Each semi-final round will have four teams taking on challenges that will demand their best. Only the best team from each round will emerge victorious. The prize? A coveted spot in the grand finals of the National STEM Championship 2024. Now let's see which teams are in semi-final one. They are Anglican High School, National Junior College, Raffles Girls School and School of Science and Technology Singapore. The Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore, or MPA, plays a critical role in shaping and bolstering our maritime industry. Welcome to the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore, and here we are at the Maritime Gallery. The teams are here to learn about MPA's major milestones and future plans. MPA aims to achieve net zero emission by the year 2050, where Tuas Port is targeted to be completed in the 2040s. Thus, today's challenge is all about being green. Teams have 90 minutes to complete a two-part challenge. In part one, they have to design a cost-effective fuel tank for a new greener energy. To design the most cost-effective cylindrical storage tank for fuel, teams must calculate how they can use the least amount of containment materials. In part two, teams must construct a vessel that uses clean energy. They are given 18 different materials to construct a vessel which uses clean energy to facilitate its propulsion. In the race for top marks, whose green vessel will be the fastest to cover the required distance? We are told that we need to bring a computer and have Excel downloaded. So we went to watch a few videos on Excel. Our Excel courses that we watched definitely paid off because we knew how to do the formulas and it actually helped on like plotting the graph. Radius is 6. 6 and 4.4? 4.42. 2 million meter cube. Liters. Yeah, but I want to change it to meter cube. Converting from milliliter to centimeter cube to meter cube is just very tedious. <laughs> so much <crash. laughs> Wait, because we put this in the middle, and I was thinking we have this thing to like keep the shape. Oh, oh, oh wait, try to. <laughs> there were some challenges that we faced along the way, like our boat kept toppling. Too heavy at the back still. Oh. oh. No. <laughs> we were quite confident as we have learned the math concepts in school already. So before the time started, we already had our thought process laid out. H times 2 H. pi r. It was about like algebra and like geometry. So even though we knew we got the answer, we wanted to like fact check it to see if like our thought process was correct. Yeah. So this is this 125 million eight, seven, eight, eight, and nine, We shove it to and then shove the top to and in the end it'll be like something Ooh. like this. Wait, that's Can actually lie. what a boot is. I don't think it's very stable. Should we just cut down the paper? We should just cut down the paper. No matter how we like modify the board, it, it keeps happening to one side or another. Okay, now it's falling backwards. Stick it on. Okay. Now it's falling forward. Now it's tilting sideways. This was really like panicking because each time it toppled, it means that some some of the paper was wasted and then it was, like we were running very low on paper. Oh! <sighs> it's okay. It's okay. No, so in Excel you include the variables like. Yeah. You should include variables. I don't know how to use Excel. The first challenge was to figure out the optimal radius and height of the cylinder to store the fuel. We did not expect to be able to use this much mathematical modeling. But also, the fact that we were only limited to Excel made it quite difficult for the graphing. Well, I, let's use graphical method. Graphical method. Graphical, graphical method? Because you can come up with a general equation. You know? Yeah, but we can't use Desmos. You can use Excel. Initially, we had like some difficulty as to basically where to start because we found out quickly that there were two unknown variables which is the radius and then the height of the cylinder. We had to do a bit of trial and error and also like manipulation. I want to point out that if this falls in the water, it's going to be wet. And it's going to be increased more. <laughs> oh, don't make it wet. We just made our own boat. That's a bad idea. Hold a paper boat and then we... Like, you, you know, know how to make a paper boat? Because I show the one. You can make a paper plate, right? You can use a paper plate. We thought that plates are really good because we could trap right inside when we cut both of them to increase buoyancy, add more weight. Bro, you don't even have space for me to move. There's no space for me to move. That's why, that's why it's not moving. 
If we place it on the ground and it turns on the fan, the boat can still move. So it means that it's really efficient already. It doesn't even have to be in the water. Because if you need to right, need to submit different values. We have, we have a graph right now. The previous two seasons, all of the challenges were not related to math. And suddenly, math came out, which kind of scared us. It made us realize that STEM is also about mathematics. Two boats at the front, then... Let this call out. In the 45 minutes, we had a lot of selections and made us do a lot of trial and errors. We would want a boat to be as light as possible, ideally, and also stable. But it takes more materials to make it stable. Okay, when we put it in, we need to make sure the boat is not sinking. No, but our in front is also filled with water, that's oh, why yeah. it's sinking. Wait, it's sinking, this side is pushing it up too much. The plastic boats had a tendency to have water flow into them, which caused the front part of our boat to sink. We managed to circumvent these issues by modifying our boat, by adding the plastic cup at the front to balance out the boat front and back. Which of these painstakingly assembled boats of various shapes, sizes and materials have what it takes to venture into uncharted waters and stay valiantly afloat? We'll find out right after the break. It's the semi-finals and the level of difficulty has increased drastically. Not only will the team's STEM knowledge be assessed, their presentation skills measured, their ingenuity will also be put to the test. Will the device that they've invented live up to their expectations? Let's see which team will win this race. This is a graph to show the relationship between the surface area and the height. So we take the midpoint where this curve cuts through this we put them together, and that's how we find the best radius and the best height. Our numbers over here, the numbers before and after it, are larger. So basically, it will be the minimum turning point, so to speak. We felt that we managed to get like all of our key points across, and we were able to convey our ideas uh, successfully. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. I come from the year 2124, and I have come up with a brand new design for a new pirate ship. It uses these two discs glued together so it's more aerodynamic and it can also contain a lot of air in between them so it can float very easily. The simplicity of SST's design really struck me. Our design managed to make it all the way through and back in a very fast time so I think that will greatly contribute to our scores. I'm looking for a man in finance. Trust fund. Six five. Blue eyes. When we were preparing, we were like standing in front of the mirror, practicing our presentations and just starting off with a song. There has been something that our team has tried to incorporate in most of our presentations. First two questions, we were quite close to the actual answer. And for the second part, we got both answers correct. Firstly, we have the initial prototype, which was a sailboat, that we determined that the centre of gravity was too elevated, which caused it to be susceptible to toppling. So as such, we pivoted to this design, which would be our cup. So by placing some weights inside, we ensured that the centre of gravity was lowered to prevent it from toppling. Uh, RGS, I appreciated their fail-fast kind of mechanism, right? They had a prototype, they knew it was not going to work. They quickly pivoted to another thing. And this is often one of the things that we do in research as well. You have to know, you know, accept when you can have failure and then you can move on to the next thing. First question, we use Excel to find our values. The most smallest answer would be that the radius is 10,000 dm cubed. At the start of the Excel sheet, I use the formula to find its surface area, but I kind of forgot to add another part of the formula which caused a very huge downfall in our answers. This design, we actually took inspiration from the Jurassic Park ride at USS because it's a circular base and it will make sure that the wind will be propelled in one direction instead of just spinning. When we did our trial and errors, our boats kept sinking and during the demonstration, it went quite successfully. To find out the least container material, we found out that when the diameter is about the same as the height, it gives us the least surface area. We followed this and used the surface area formula to find out the surface area of one, two million litre container and four, five hundred thousand litre containers. This is the boat we had made. We create the the structure of various traditional sailing boats as they have been proven to be quite effective in history. They were trying to build boats of conventional design and just to do that in a very short period of time, I thought that was just really impressive. 
When we actually put a boat into the water for demonstration, the boat sank after its first try and it was quite hard back in see that so we had actually like put a lot of time and effort into the boat. If I had one thing I'd be thankful for today, it would be my team. We are at a confidence level of four only. We hope to make it to the grand finals. Suddenly we will move on to the grand finals. Now let's shift our focus to the four contenders in semi-final two. They are Anderson Secondary School, CHIJ St. Nicholas Girls School, NUS High School of Math and Science, and St. Joseph's Institution. Hello everyone, welcome to MSS. Uh, I would really like to congratulate all of you for making it so far on this journey by advancing to the semi-finals of this competition. At the Centre for Climate Research Singapore, teams learned that a supercomputer named Utama is used to collect a whole host of data to produce weather forecasts. A helium-filled weather balloon carrying a radio sonde is released twice daily to collect data of the atmosphere, up to 100,000 feet. This data is then transmitted to the ground station for further processing. Teams have 90 minutes to produce site-specific 24-hour weather forecasts over Aogang and Jurong East and propose a plan for the day. To assist them, teams are given historical weather data from automatic weather stations island-wide and from the weather balloon as well as forecast data produced by Singvi, MSS's weather prediction model that is run on Utama. Teams that can identify patterns in the historical data and exhibit creativity in designing their plans could find themselves basking in the sun. At the start of the challenge, right, we couldn't figure out how that string of Python code kind of worked and we couldn't like understand all that data that they presented to us. So if you look at the how, how we name it, right, so you'll see forecast lead time, forecast valid time. Um, the .nc file is actually a map, which is what is being plotted when you run the script. So then we were really like trying to figure out and trying to like play with what we are given and figure out like what we're supposed to do with it and how to like understand all the information that we're provided with. Oh, wind speed. This one, this was the numbers that I saw just now. And you're getting better at this. This is analysis of data. Yeah, data science is the science. To do data science was not something that we guessed. Rock, paper, scissors. As part of the challenge, teams had to fight for the items they wanted to use in their presentation to the judges. Scissors, paper, stone. Yes. I'll take the fan. Guys, yes. I got a fan and a cat. They're more, they're more likely to understand this, right? Fun fact, the other group took umbrella. Huh? I think they're on the right path right now. I have full confidence in them. Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome to CHIJ St. Nicholas Forecast. Now, take a look at tomorrow's morning temperature. As you can see, largely in Singapore, your temperatures will be ranging from about 25 degrees to 32 degrees throughout the whole day. For those of you outdoor people, can I say that it is a good day for you to do your activities tomorrow? We should go jogging at Maplewood Park near our house tomorrow morning and have our favourite breakfast, kaya toast with half-boiled egg. It was quite heartening to see that like, um, throughout the presentation, you know, the judges were like smiling, nodding, they even laughed a bit. So I hope that they um, really did enjoy uh, the presentation we provided. Yeah. Weather is a physical phenomenon, right? So it should be able to get explained with physical models. So why do you think that it is not predictable at all? Mm, well, ultimately, there are still factors such as like uh, natural disasters. And when it's warmer, convectional clouds can form and there will be convectional rain, which is usually sudden and intense. But you just explained, you know, it, there's a convectional current that goes on. Can you model that? But it's hard to predict that it will happen. We went in with high spirits and came out yeah. with... I don't know. <laughs> For the first 30 minutes, we discussed. And then me and Fahima, we did the data collection. And they played with the Sing V and got the graph for the prediction. I thought they were going to ask us how lightning rods work because I couldn't see any other questions being kind of scientific. I'm, I'm going to be honest, when they said put in these codes, <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it. 
Good evening, viewers. This is Anderson's secondary weather forecast coming to you live on news regarding February 6th. Okay, so this is the prediction made by Sing V. So morning of February 6th, uh, we do not expect any rain and we expect it to be relatively okay when it comes to humidity as here is Jurong East and here is Hogang. During the presentation to the judges, I think the creativity part is where we did really well at. But my confidence is also kind of dwindling because other teams also had pretty creative ways of presenting their findings. Since it's not really going to rain, so you know, eat some food or bring some fan to cool yourself down, bring a cap and have some fun. Yeah, th that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's time to get questions, guys. Actually, hey, I just got a curious question. So your previous competitor is telling us that Haogang is not going to rain at all. Which one do you think that you are going to be more confident with? Your algorithm or their algorithm? Ours. 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 Why? If your new forecast isn't really confident about your own algorithm, I don't think you should be presenting. All right? I think let's get that out of the way. If we're not confident in ours, we shouldn't be here. Okay. So far, two teams have completed their presentations. Will the remaining teams be able to withstand the pressure better? 11.50 to 12.10. Wait, no, 12.20. Then 12.20 to okay. 1 o'clock. Wait, this is UTIMS. This is a Python thing, you know? I think today's challenge was actually very interesting. Like, we didn't expect data analytics at all. We expected a more hands-on building, something like that. So, like, after we received the challenge, we were initially very confused. Have you figured it out? No. What, what, what am I supposed to figure out how it works? I would suggest run the code for the day itself to just like test out like what it's actually like. But then like in the end, we somehow managed to like figure it out. So I guess overall it was like very good. It was a nice experience. Hi everyone. Uh, this is my last night in Singapore. Uh, Dennison, what the activities do you have for us tomorrow morning? Oh, Joel, I know you like sports really much. I suggest you to go to Jurong East or Haukang because over there, there are very high quality sports facilities and everyone goes there. Maybe you should too. Oh, that sounds very interesting. But isn't it outdoors? I've been noticing the past five days, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., it's been raining. I think for one, it was the lack of time for the presentation. Like four minutes, there was quite a lot of cover content to cover. So we found that quite a challenge to actually fit all the content inside and we end up overrunning, so I think uh, that part could have been better managed. But how do I know whether I can trust you or not? Well, I have a secret little partner. The mastermind! Yes, it is me, the Sing V model. I am able to take all of the information and churn out this. I think overall, our energy level was... We managed to keep it quite high and also deliver the content that we are really passionate about. For example, whatever we found out through the analysis, we were actually quite excited to convey to the judges and I think we managed to portray that through our skit as well as the uh, excitement and through like, how we managed to like, speak to the judges. Did you use the weather balloon information? We actually didn't take note of the weather balloon information as well as the AWS stage information. Although we acknowledge that they were there, we actually looked through the data set, but we felt that because those were the raw data and we do not have the suitable model to actually convert that raw data into predictions, that's why we chose to not include that in our analysis, but instead focus on the uh, output by the Sing V model. Just to add on, these um, the weather balloon and the AWS provides these raw data. However, when we look at the raw data, we can sort of see a rough estimate of how the weather conditions were like for the previous days. And moreover, to add on, it's in the February period, which is the end of the monsoon season. And generally, his, based on historical evidence, February is one of the driest months, so it'll be quite unlikely that it would have a heavy downpour on uh, February uh, February 6th. Yeah. yeah, I like that you considered the seasonal variation. Yeah. Wait, no, 28, that was for... That was for... Me and Shrave were in charge of uh, collecting and analysing the data and turning it into graphs. 29.6. At first, we were trying to find like some of... like we find the average temperature in the code, we find that like quite hard to do, especially like importing the data. So in the end, we decided to just do it manually, which like took a lot of time. Yes, I am not well today. I was feeling very tired. I had a headache. I think I accidentally like fell asleep. Yeah, I think it definitely led to us like working less efficiently. So I was like not helping the team as much. 
I want to plan my activities, but like I don't want tomorrow's weather to interfere with it. Let's check, Let's the, check the, the weather for app. tomorrow. Hey, use the My ENV app, right? It's the most accurate in Singapore. For example, looking at the temperature, we can take a look at Haogang. Haogang has a temperature within the range of 28.5 to 29 degrees on all five of the days. The average precipitation is really close to zero for all five of the days as well. We also uh, summed up. There were five judges. I saw that around at least three of them were smiling throughout our entire presentation. I think that we presented our information in a factual and accurate and logical manner, or our presentation was just humorous. But how are you so sure that you're accurate? Well, this is because we use the mean of uh, the five days, which means we are working with more data points so that we're finding the average more equally instead of a median where it's just one data point that might be unreliable. Let me plan my schedule real quick with my family. Hello? Uh, tomorrow morning, you want to go for a family job? I think we feared a 7 out of 10 in this challenge. We saw that the plan for the day was generally quite good, quite sunny. But is there a prediction of a percentage of a chance of rainfall or precipitation from the data that you've got? Well, that's one of our downsides of this method of calculating rainfall. Because whilst it may provide the average rainfall, we realize that it does not show the percentage that it will actually rain. I think it went quite well. Even though they had follow-up questions, I think it was still a good presentation overall. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. I did really enjoy all the presentations. What really stood out to me was the team from NUS. I really love that perspective and it's a very holistic perspective that you have it not just from the user point of view, but also the, you know, the application that produces it. I'm sure we're all dying to know which teams from today's semi-final have emerged triumphant and are moving on to the grand final. Well, the moment we've all been waiting for is here, the big reveal. Teams, you went to the Centre for Climate Research Singapore. Teams, you went to the Singapore Maritime Gallery. Anglican High is not here due to other school commitments. It's now time to reveal which team proceeds to the finals. And the team that moves to the finals is... SSD. <laughs> and US High, congratulations. We were honestly quite surprised when we heard our name because the other teams, they were also quite good. We didn't really expect to go this far into the competition, so it's a welcome surprise. Congratulations to the School of Science and Technology Singapore and NUS High School of Math and Science for making it through to the grand finals. Join me next week as the eight remaining teams pit themselves against each other and go all out for the semi-finals in the National STEM Championship 2024.